Welcome to PopCast, the Patterns of Power podcast, discussing grammar in the context of reading and writing conventions. I'm Travis Leach. And I'm Jeff Anderson, and we're today's host. For episode five, this is step four of the Patterns of Power process. The invitation to share and celebrate middle school edition. Travis, you're kind of a happy guy, happy-go-lucky. Why, why is it so important that we share and celebrate as part of the Patterns of Power process? Well, I like to, in my classroom, take the opportunity to celebrate my students as many times as possible throughout the day. Yeah. And this is really an important part of the process because this invitation Give students an audience oh, yeah, to audience. share their writing with, an audience of their peers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making assumptions here that we're, this is a safe space, a safe audience to share with. Also showing this, this invitation helps to show students that their words have meaning and their words have power in the classroom and just generally speaking as writers. Can I jump in here for a second? Yeah, please. Because, you know, a lot of times people ask about, like, my kids aren't motivated. My kids don't want to write. And I have to tell you, probably one of the number one ways that you can do this and to get those kids writing is to have them share a small bit of text, which this is, that again, it's that small bite-sized chunk. But when you know you're going to be able to be heard, it changes something in you and what you're willing to do and the amount of effort you're going to put into it. If, if I want to make my friends laugh, let's say, well, then I'm going to do some certain things. I'm going to play around with with purpose and effect and synthesizing what I know about this and how I can make this into a joke. I get to do all that when there's an audience. And I think our favorite thing to say is, let's say it together, what, what is, is celebrated, celebrated is repeated. repeated. What is celebrated is repeated. And we got that from our friend Debbie Miller, who's another Stenhouse author. And that is a powerful statement for us to be able to use. So thanks for that, Debbie. How we invite students to share and celebrate in our classroom is as follows. We start with that piece of imitated writing that students have created. In step three of the process, the invitation to imitate, we're going to ask them in some format to share their writing either with each other or with the whole class. And we're going to ask students to share their writing twice that first time we ask students to share their imitation just so that we as audience members can comprehend the words that they have put together and really understand just what their sentence is saying. That second time that we're asking them to share is so that we can hear the pattern, so that we, ha we can get that idea of the pattern and really get more of that content, let that content settle in. And I think that that's one of the cool things is that you get to sink into that pattern just a little bit more, just be immersed in that pattern just a little bit more. And what's fun is if they, let's say a kid in your room wasn't listening. That never happens in middle school, does it? <laughs> but if a kid wasn't listening, the first thing he he hears everybody go, ooh, when it's first read. Oh, yeah. Or laugh hysterically mm -hmm. when it's first read. You know, that really good, I mean, what writers write for, that audience that Travis was talking about. When that happens, they're going to like, hey, what'd he say? What'd he say? Well, if you know what she said is going to be repeated again, you'll be quiet and you'll actually listen. And they, they will listen. They love this part. And some of the kids who are the most most resistant to share love sharing these because they get good reactions and it's a manageable bite-sized chunk. So don't forget that important power of sharing and celebrating. And what we love about this too is that it's another opportunity to really etch this pattern into their brain. They see it once in our invitation to notice. Again, another version in compare and contrast. They create one and imitate, and now they're hearing more and more of those patterns, that, that same pattern being used in different contexts. So if you're going to skip a step, well, number one, don't skip any of the steps, but especially don't skip this step. I feel people sometimes think, well, that's fluff, but I hope you're hearing it's motivation. It's what drives the writers into trying 
in attempting to use that author's purpose and craft we want him to use. And let's be honest, this is the step that builds our community of writers right here. There you go. Our community of writers exists for this right here, to be able to share with our audience and get that feedback that they so desire. And think about how many kids can share when it's just a sentence that you read twice. We can have a lot more sharing going on and there's a lot more connection that can go on between those members to see, to hear other voices. And when I hear Travis do it, who's my peer, then it makes it possible for me, let's say I wasn't able to come, to come up with the invitation. Well, that's okay. You tried. I listened to his, and then I might feel safer. That's why we always kind of call, like, time to share a little before everybody's finished, before the trouble starts. You know, that's how I like to describe it. So we, we ask them to share a little bit before everybody's finished. When there's a, a third to two-thirds of the kids have finished, then we might get them to start sharing. And then that kid that's still struggling or at their desk these students will get to hear more models and maybe be able to crank out their own and raise their hand and still be in time to share. So we have that going where everybody's engaged. There's not lots of time where nobody's engaged. We want them to be engaged, but we also want them to be connected because in this world, none of us have enough connection anymore because of the digital nature of our lives. Yeah, you can share digitally and I'm not against that, and you can connect digitally, but we also need that human to human contact, which I think is so important and can come here and that, that sound of laughter, to be able to hear that when you wrote words is such a wonderful connected feeling. And so affirming. Yeah. So affirming to me personally as a writer, and I'm sure for all of you in the writing that you do. Offering a few opportunities or options for sharing and celebrating with your students. You can check this out inside the Patterns of Power book. It's on page 52. A really nice flow chart that shows you the nuts and bolts of these different sharing options. But just to give you an idea of three options that we think are really effective, that have worked really well for us in a lot of different classroom settings. The first is doing a partner share or a, a small group share. So depending on the structure of your classroom, if you have table groups, having that table group share with each other and possibly choosing uh, best of to share out to the whole class. That's one thing that I like to do. Having students partner up in some novel way and then share with each other and give each other feedback. Hey, what's one thing that you really appreciated? A word or what's some feedback that you can give about the, their writing? And don't forget the focus phrase. Thank you. Next. I forgot what the focus phrase was. Oh yeah, it's I use the comma which to add detail. That's why you have to keep repeating it. It's not just for the kids, it's for you. I use the comma which to add detail. And that's a great check-in as well. Did, did I use the comma which to add detail appropriately here? So, appropriately? Are you saying that kids can be inappropriate? <laughs> oh, sorry. Never mind. That's not where you were In going. middle school? I mean, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> it may have happened once or twice. <laughs> Our next opportunity for celebration is doing a whole group celebration. So either in some novel way that you choose or looking at some of the lessons that we have throughout the book, we offer different options for celebration. Sharing writing with the class and acknowledging in some fun way the whole class as an audience give some love back to whoever decides to share in whatever way they do. So I like doing different types of, of cheers. Always is a fun one, you know. What about music? I love music. And what if you played around with music? You can play, you know, stadium rock, in and out. But we had a little fun with it. We had a little fun and we made up a, little, a few little words. Yeah, we so sure listen, did. And it goes a little something like this. Woo! Who, which then, comma, see how well it connects. Woo, who, which then, comma, it has a pause on its mind. Would you believe? Ooh, would so you fresh. believe we did not rehearse that? And yeah, that's true. It's it's a very it's a big truth. We did not rehearse that. That's just how that came out. It's beautiful. I know that's a different kind of witch. This is a W-I-T-C-H-Y, witchy woman, and we're talking about 
the relative pronoun, which, see why we don't keep up with the titles? We can't even think about all those abstract titles. <laughs> W-H-I-C-H. Music's fun. It's enjoyable. I listen to it to get in a mood. I know that I've uh, reminded kids 450 times to get their headphones out of their ear as they're walking through the halls. Kids want music in their lives as well to set the mood. So I think it's a great extension of the mood that we want to bring into this classroom. Well, tell about what we did in the book, the Patterns of Power, inviting adolescent writers into the conventions of language for grades six through eight. Tell them about what we did, Travis. So we were really mindful of adding music that we felt either caught that mood or caught that vibe that we were looking for, or music where the lyrics matched the pattern that we were taking a look at in that lesson. So inside the book, when you're looking in that invitation to celebrate area, you're going to notice in most lessons that there is a musical note symbol. And next to that are some musical choices, some songs that we thought really pair well with this lesson. And it's even a Spotify playlist. Yeah, absolutely. In the back of the book, Appendix B, a, we've included the soundtrack for the entire book, all of the lessons, and there is a QR code as well as a link for you to hop into Spotify and get the entire playlist for free to be able to use in your classroom. Well, I've already had my appendix out. Am I going to be able to use this? Absolutely. Oh, all right. Thanks, Travis. <laughs> So we've talked about partner and small group celebration. We've talked about whole group celebration. Let's also talk about the idea of publishing student writing, publishing these imitations somewhere within our classroom walls or even out in the hallway for people to see. So if I want my friend who is in a different class period to see the really funny and witty imitation that I put together, it would be great to have a space in the classroom for me to post that, maybe on a note card or even a sticky note on some kind of anchor chart that attaches... Maybe under the focus phrase? Attaches to the focus phrase. That is a brilliant idea. I took the words out of your mouth. Yes, you did. But publishing student writing, I, I love to have my walls just plastered with student writing and student work because that, again, that sets the tone that this is a place where we take chances, we're writers, and we celebrate each other. Because when we risk, we accelerate our growth. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about, Jeff, do you want to talk about any pitfalls in this stage? I know you had really touched on that one idea of, hey, if I don't have enough time, maybe this is one that I cut when we really address that this is a very important step of the process. Well, I was thinking of this thing you said the other day when we were planning a, this podcast and you were saying, here is where we pour fuel on the writer. I love that because it's true. It's about the motivation. And we all, people are always saying their kids aren't motivated. And if we take away the very thing that's going to motivate them, then it kind of disrupts the process. This is part of the process and it comes here for a reason. There'll be an application in our next step, but the, another application, but this is an application in and of itself, just the sharing and the hearing of that pattern of power. Now, some people are afraid, like, well, what if a kid shares something incorrect, like shares a sentence that's incorrect? Well, hopefully, two things. Hopefully, you've bopped around the classroom like a ping pong ball, and you know where some places that you need to go check, and you've helped them one-on-one -on -one get to where they need to be. But if a kid raises his hand or her hand and proudly reads something aloud that is wrong, if it's real close... Sometimes if it's real close, I'll read it the second time. And I do this when they're right or wrong so the kids never know why I'm doing it because sometimes the kids share something and their voice just doesn't carry over the room, so I want to repeat it. So, and, and we're really not about right and wrong. We're about meaning and effect. But if I took that moment to correct that student in front of everybody else, then we've just destroyed that warm environment and that motivation Travis was talking about. So if you must address it, you can get to it later, but what I really feel like is you put up another mentor sentence and you have some conversation, you talk about it and you let them figure it out, them find it by giving them examples. We teach through connection, not correction. Correcting is not teaching. And, you know, it'd be so cool if it were, but it's just not. And we want a trusting, warm environment. 
I think another pitfall that you may be fearful of, but I'm telling you, if you've gone through the process already, uh, I have never, I have not yet seen it where students, where no student wants to share. <laughs> right? Even middle school. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a, that's a miracle. Absolutely. So again, if that's something that this, this happens in your classroom the first time you share and celebrate, then I would suggest, just like in that invitation to notice where we talk about scaffolding upward into whole group, start with a partner. Put kids in a space with a partner and have them share with each other. That's a very intimate space where there's not a lot of uh, fear of failure and then move them as their confidence builds into that whole group. Well, Tra Travis, I think we've, um, I'm hearing the theme song come in, our Patterns of oh, Power podcast theme song. So that means you. it's time to go. It is. We're really glad you joined us this week to talk about sharing and celebrating. Next week, we're gonna be talking about the invitation to apply yet another application because we know that that's what the research pushes. We wanna thank Stenhouse.com S-T-E-N-H-O-U-S-E dot -E com for sponsoring us this week and every week. And we appreciate their generosity of letting us get here with you with the number one podcast on teaching grammar in context. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. <laughs>